So um, <laughs> question num from a number nine is saying, I would like to help with figuring out my plant herb allies in order to unlock my uniqueness that I'm struggling to discover. Is creating an ancestral altar necessary to tap into those powers? I don't want to always have something to say first because I'm the one reading the question, so I can always jump in right after the question, but I will lend something to that here in a moment, but hold the ski makers. <laughs> well, um, this is what I will say. You know, in my earlier days on the journey, I had an ancestor altar. You know what I mean? And again, that's all external. You know, the nine has it all. I mean, it can do everything. You don't need an ancestor altar unless you want one, but you don't necessarily have to have one. Um, you know, nines, um, it will benefit you to be in nature, you know, because we are very fiery. And so um, we can get angry very quick. Um, that was something that I struggle with is, is I can get angry very fast, really fast on fire, you know, almost dangerous. <laughs> but, um, you know, one thing that calmed me down was just nature in general. So all the plants didn't matter what kind of plant it was. I loved it. You know, just, you know, just being able to check in with, you know, the mother and just plant my feet or just hug a tree or, you know, take pictures of flowers or just go on walks. Those kind of things can help you a lot quicker on your spiritual journey. Also, uh, being very fiery as well, like, Water can smooth out things as well for you, too. Like just going to go, you know, I love water, like just going to go sit by it, listening to it, soundscaping your environment, things of that nature. You also need a lot of green around, even though, you know, you're a nine and, you know, it's important to have, you know, red, pink and burgundy and things of that nature in your environment. Some green can help, too. You know, maybe buy you a plant or something, have life in your home, because one thing that I noticed uh, on my journey was that I went to a sixes home and they had life everywhere. They had butterflies in their house. They had, <laughs> they had uh, um, plants everywhere. They had everything everywhere. And me being Mars, I came back and this was a while back. I came back to my house and I was like, there's no plants. There's no life here. <laughs> you know, there's nothing here. And I said, I have to have some kind of green, some kind of life in my environment. It can't just be me. You know, so uh, one thing to do is um, is you want to be around be around nature and things of that nature. And if you want to have an ancestor altar, you can. But, you know, just try to avoid the external deities, you know, ex avoid the external deities. You are everything. There's no need to have anything else outside of you. You know, you are the altar just to throw that out there. OK, hold this. Wholeness, I also wanted to to add in there, Paige, about that that insight is incredible. Like mm -hmm. just in in seeing how I think I guess because you know when we think of what is an altar anyway, uh, beyond an expression of the things that we value the highest and the most, right? So there is absolutely nothing wrong with having you know because you got to put something in your house. Like some people put a TV up there, so if there's a TV there, why couldn't there be something that is an expression of your highest? your highest endeavors. Like you may have pictures of your family there. You may have pictures or, or, or flowers or roses or different things that emit certain energy. So I think that when we use this term altar, it doesn't always mean, you know, the last one from the crazy movie where they was up there and it altar only means just what is there that you feel like that you cherish so much. And this is where actually even the sacrifice and the altar also got connected on a higher metaphysical level rather than the as below version, which is that generally what a person cherishes the most is on the altar. And it's just saying that this is what I, I know I received from the experience that I'm having and what I'm cherishing, not this is what I'm willing to sacrifice and give away because it was already received and because the, the altar is made from things that you already have received. So that's all I wanted to add to that, just in, you know, such a beautiful build on that. I want to jump in and just add, uh, as we're talking about relationships um, with plants, right? Well, well, and that is what I wanted to say was that as we look to um, know the plants, right, to get to know them, it is a relationship. And so I think for a nine energy to, to understand that as you enter into any any type of, you know, sort of plant um, 
experience that it, it really is a, a relationship that you develop between yourself and the plant and it will change over time. And so for really any number that is looking to get closer to the plants, um, walking out in nature and, and finding a, you know, a special place or a tree and just taking notice of the plants that are around you, um, getting local is very, very key. You know, it's all around you. This isn't anywhere you need to travel great distances to see. Um, in my yard, for example, I have a, it's considered a weed, it's called lemon balm. Um, and it grows everywhere. You plant it one place and then it just, you know, thrives all over your yard like a mint would. And uh, lemon balm is actually quite calming plant. And it is, um, said to make the heart happy. And, you know, so I was kind of going through a period of time in my life and I was like going out in my yard and I'm like, oh my God, Joy, the lemon balm is all around you. It's speaking to you, right? So sometimes it can, they, they appear to you um, one time or many times. And so you come into the, the plant world as uh, it's relationship based. And so I think for nines, that's it's an important thing to keep in mind. And you can introduce these relationships in a variety of ways, very easy, you know, just to sip some herbal teas and get to know some plants spirits that way and then begin you can ingest them in your foods and things so it's a nice gentle way to begin your relationship with the plants and also for number nines to keep there because their their system tends to be quite acidic because of the fiery mars energy to keep their doshas more of a kappa dosha to increase the kappa foods like cooling foods like yogurts and to increase more raw food and increase their iron intake. And one thing that really helps number nines is a lot of carrot juice. It um, helps to calm their system down. And as Sister Joy mentioned, the calming teas also helps them. So yeah, wholeness. Wholeness. All right, so we're gonna keep moving through this. I know there's also a lot that uh, the key makers are holding, and especially in relation to personal altars, there's many different practices that you can go in with yourself and to actually find things that resonate with you. Obviously, you know, maybe a good exercise is to go and find the things that you resonate with. You can use genealogy for that. There's a Jordish numerology book also available with many different correspondence in it. And then actually creating some variant or form of things around you that resonate who you are is always a great idea. So a personal altar is the key, you know, keep going with it to reflect what you hold dear to you the most.